Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of Winter's Glow. In this episode, I'll be focusing more on the snow, working towards creating that realistic looking effect. In the previous episode, I added some shadow to this area under the trees. I'm using a small to medium filbert brush. It's a four or a five. I'm looking back and forth at the photograph, um, trying to determine where to put the highlights. And it's kind of interesting because of course there's a lot of light areas in the snow, but if you look closer, you'll see there are lots of variations as well. And the more that you layer the white paint, the brighter it becomes. It can be a little bit transparent, so it's helpful in some ways because it allows you to have a blended area um, if there's only one layer or you water it down a bit. And then building up the paint in layers of just the white in certain areas will just make it that much more vibrant. So to create the effect that there's a hill of snow or bump of snow or even a ditch, um, you just have to keep working with the shadows and the light. Here you can see I'm gently wiping off some of the white that I applied. And some of that is, I feel I put too much on there and I need to reapply, or I didn't put it quite in the area I wanted to, and I need to reapply. But another part of it is I'm just wiping some of it off in order to blend. Removing some of the paint with a slight damp cloth is actually one of the techniques I'm using now and it helps to leave a little bit of residue on the canvas of the color that I'm applying, just enough to give the effect I'm hoping for. So I'm playing this video in real time and you're seeing how very carefully I have to go over an area repeatedly in order to get the effect I'm looking for. But at some point I need to leave that area and move to another one because if you're going back and forth with uh, two different values of paint in one area too long, um, the paint being wet in so many layers might eventually stop working in your favor. So it's better to leave it to dry for a little while and then move to a different area and come back later. Now I'm applying some other areas of shadow and sometimes I decide to use a larger brush than I need to apply these little marks um, and just wipe away some of it because wiping away actually gives me a better effect than if I just applied it with a very small brush um, and had a more of a sort of defined edge on that. Sometimes I want that smudged look. Now I'm applying some grey in this area to define some of the fallen tree pieces and branches on the ground. So the blending that happens here in order to make this look more like a groove or a ditch is simply adding the grey and then getting a wiping off the brush a little bit and then dipping into a tiny bit of white paint and then coming back and painting along the edge of that wet gray paint so that it sort of blends and creates a different value. So I didn't have to mix a different value of gray in order to achieve that. I'm just slowly blending the white into it uh, to create that transition. When painting a winter scene, um, I try not to think of 
the fact that I'm painting snow. I try to think of it more of just areas of darker gray, lighter gray, and then these white areas and bright areas. And so it's more about the areas of color than what it actually is. Because if I imagine that it's snow, it almost seems impossible to duplicate it. Because what you're actually painting when you paint snow is you're painting the shadows and the depths in order to bring it out and then adding the highlights back on afterwards. As I work along, um, I may even paint over elements of the painting that seem like they might have been permanent, but they're not because it's continuously evolving. Sometimes, um, as I said, I add a generous amount of gray and then kind of use it to sculpt the shape I'm looking for with the white. Um, so I'll add the gray and then it gives me kind of a background to make the white paint shape on top of it. To make the shadows a little bit more intense, I am now adding a little bit of black to the underside of one of these logs over here. Once I do that, I start to smooth and blend with a little bit more white over top and carefully thin the line out a bit just to make it more natural looking like there's snow sitting on top of it. And then I'm doing a little more blending with the white. Then looking at the photograph, I realized that one of the trees in the background needs to be, needs to come down a little bit lower. Just little things I might have missed and then starting to realize just about here, there's some shadow under a tree and then the tree. I'm going to try to use the palette knife to bring that line of the tree down. There we go. Now using a size four round brush, I'm just going to add some of the shadow at the bottom of the tree and make some marks so that I know where the tree has to be extended. The palette knife didn't leave too much of a mark there, so I'm defining it more with the brush right now. And I don't need to paint that part today. Um, it's just like doing a little sketch, so I know it needs to be there when I get to it. Now I'm looking at the other trees that might need to be extended and making sure I've got the positions correct. So this has gotten me looking around the base of the trees to see where I need to make some changes again. I'm adding some more white down here and I'm doing that in a stippling motion so that it sort of works with the texture of the sponge technique that I applied the foliage in the background with. Also, the stippling technique is a really nice effect in the snow, especially around the base of trees. I'm just using a little bit of white to define uh, the edge of this extended tree part that I've put here. I'll add a little bit more shadow under this tree as well. Oh, just defining the edge of the tree there. And a little bit more of this one. And a little bit of the shadow underneath it. Then I'm going to take some white paint and just add some more highlights where I see them in the snow. A little bit with this small brush and then I switch to the size 5 filbert again.
So I feel like at this point in the painting is when I start to see the highlights taking more of an effect. You see that deep shadow on the left and the snow, the shadow leading up to the highlights on the top of it where I'm painting now. And then as you see the paint becoming brighter, you can really see the effect coming through of the snow beginning to look more realistic. And this has taken layer upon layer to do. This is the time in the painting when it gets a little bit more exciting for me to do this uh, because I start to see it coming to life a little bit more. The first brush strokes on the painting are exciting because I'm envisioning what it's going to look like and I have all these hopes and then I create the 2D and that's a fun stage because I've got all the base colors down and now the so next level of joy is to create the illusion of 3D. And when some of that starts to take shape, it motivates me even more. In the next episode, I will continue to work on creating the illusion of depth in the painting. Thank you for joining me on the journey of creating this painting. If you'd like to see more videos in this series, please go to Art with Janine Liza YouTube and find the playlist Winter's Glow. If you're a subscriber to this channel, thank you so much for helping this channel grow. If you're a visitor and you'd like to help this channel grow, please go to Art with Janine Liza YouTube and feel free to click subscribe.